Well, praise God, Woodlawn Faith. It is a joy and privilege to come to you in this format during the season of Advent. And we lit the candle of hope this past Sunday on yesterday. So I am grateful for where we've been. I'm grateful for where we are. And I'm even more grateful for where we're headed. I praise God for God's faithfulness and wanted to lift up some announcements so that you can have them before you. Invite your friends that may be looking for light. Invite your enemies that may be looking for peace. Invite your coworkers that might be looking for something different than what the world has to offer as we lean into this season. All right, are you ready? Let me share my screen and list uh, some of the announcements that we have in uh, one celebration. One celebration that I definitely wanna lift up is this past Thursday um, on the 24th before my family and um, Irene and her family and Michael and his family and uh, Yvonne and uh, her family and others that were trying to be a part and others that donated in other ways. We thank God for the Lewis family. Um, and we praise God for our church administrator who um, challenged me to uh, answer the question, what are we doing? And, you know, everybody has a place in God's plan. And often someone will offer the spark that I need to uh, hear from God to move in a new direction. So we moved in a new direction. And it was in the 12th hour that we got a call from the Knights of Columbus who donated 50 lunches or 50 dinners, I should say, uh, to give out to the community. Because in the past, we've gone to several places and they said, well, we've got enough help. And other places uh, we went and found out that they had more than enough help. So we decided to fill the gap in an area where there was a need. And that is the need to families that would never go out to a place and eat with others that they didn't know, but yet still in need of meals. And so we, sent out word through the food bank and through West Potomac. Um, and, uh, you know, I was hoping that we wouldn't have to throw any meals away um, and that we get at least 50 people that we could help. Well, we got about 100 that we could help. And I praise God for that. We got the 50 meals from from the uh, Knights of Columbus and then uh, Jim McCracken, praise be to God. Uh, he, he he said, come here with me. Uh, I got something to give you. And he gave me another full tray of turkey, uh, another full tray of mashed potatoes. And then uh, several families went and bought chickens and uh, then the vegetables, then the desserts. And then we orchestrated a process through uh, Yvonne and company in the kitchen and created over another 50 meals and uh, even had leftovers. So come on. Yeah, we went from 50 meals to having leftovers after serving 100. Won't he do it? Praise be to God. My focus for you this season is Christ. And I want to help you do whatever you can not to be whirling and twirling in the lower uh, chakras and the lower energy levels where the enemy wants to distract us from what God has given us to do and who God has called us to be in this season. And I see it and I want you to see it as well. So I want you to take advantage of all the different ways that this opportunity is being presented. All right, what else? Announcements. Uh, let's class leaders. Oh, let me, there's another slide that didn't show up and I'll say that. We won't say that now. We praise God for our uh, charge conference on uh, yesterday. Praise be to God. And, you know, we have been announcing this over for over a month that there was going to be the charge conference at 4 p.m. So, so we thank God for all of those who are able to attend via in uh, via Zoom and in person. And this year we didn't have a mock charge conference. Of course, mock charge conferences are not required, but we have had those in the past, but we're moving into the future. And this year, uh, we did not have a mock charge conference. The charge conference took place on yesterday, as was advertised. And also uh, the positions that were discussed 
in the uh, mock, or forgive me, in the real charge conference, uh, we didn't have a mock charge conference, uh, were uh, voted on. All of the items uh, by way of our book of disciplines that needed to be voted on were voted on. And so we thank God for all of those different areas, and we will be sending out that to you as well, the um, the slate that we had to vote on. You know, we had to vote on uh, the One Leadership Board, which encompasses the Finance Committee, the Trustees Committee, uh, and the Staff Pastor uh, Relations Committee. Uh, the One Board encompasses all of those, and that has to be voted on. And this year, we also left it up that we're uh, grateful to bring on board uh, Barbara uh, Wright onto the one board, uh, Tommy Henderson on the one board. And although they have family members that serve uh, in paid capacity in the church, uh, we have made a way to uh, reconcile that by way of two different areas. One is when we go into executive session, they will be excused from entering executive sessions and anything financial that has to deal with um, the budget and uh, personnel will be handled. All of those items will be handled in executive session. And I have been in communication with, with our superintendent and prayerfully we'll, prayerfully, we'll be uh, moving into that vision where there are dozens upon dozens upon dozens of individuals as we grow in Christ and grow in numbers that can serve uh, in our various leadership board positions. However, at this point in the juncture, as a nominations team, we felt that this would be um, a great way to move this year. So we praise God for, I praise God for the nominations committee. And now I want to lift up uh, some of the other ministries. And of course, these ministries are not um, voted upon. They do not need to be voted upon. We voted in the past. We have presented all ministries in the entire packet. Uh, however, these ministries do not need to, need to be voted upon at uh, charge conference. And so we want to present them to you and give you some information on who to contact if you feel called to one of these ministries. And you'll be getting um, this week a handout or an email that shows the current individuals that are part of these ministries. And as we move into this new season, if your name is on a uh, particular ministry, then please take a look and let me know whether you want to continue to serve in that ministry or not. There are a lot of individuals on these ministries. And so we want to know if you are want to serve and also point you in the right direction if you see a ministry where you might not serve, but would like to inquire about what it would take to be on that ministry. So class leaders, you're going to get an email from me asking uh, whether you're going to get the uh, this list from last year to see if you still want to serve. And we praise God for you as that, as for that ministry as well. Okay, let's move on. There is the prayer ministry. Uh, we want to reestablish a prayer ministry so that individuals that um, are really connected to the church um, through uh, our vision of bringing one another into worship, growing with one another in uh, studying God's word and serving out in the world. So if you are active in those items, please um, reach out to me and we will establish that prayer ministry for those that have the capacity to be in prayer with others, right? And I would say that uh, uh, one of the prerequisites of being uh, in deep prayer with others is really in tune with others through the ministry of uh, worship through the ministry of serving and through the ministry of growing. Uh, and with that said, we pray that if you feel called to this ministry and this is something you can live into, by all means, pre please uh, give me a call or text or email. 
communications. We want to continue to revamp that. We're looking to the day where we have someone in charge of our communications that would include both the uh, uh, video, uh, Zoom, this includes information that goes out. It includes all of the uh, IT stuff as well in communication. So let me know if you want to serve there. Evangelism as well. If you want to help be a part of a strategic evangelism process and um, use your gift in that capacity, also let me know. New ministries, that also falls under the pastor, right? So uh, if there's a new ministry you want to birth, uh, let's talk. I, pr I pray that I can fan the flames on that as well. Stewardship. If you want to be a part of the stewardship uh, team as we look in the years to come on how to uh, not only be better stewards, but also take advantage of various grants that we might be able to go after and uh, different items that will fall under stewardship. Women of Faith, we thank God for the reinvigoration of the United Methodist Women, now known as Women of Faith. If you want to be a part of what they have going on and be a part of that ministry, please reach out to Connie Teal. United Methodist Men, reach out to Lewis Carter as they will be announcing and working on their, uh, their new United Methodist Men chairperson. Um, and that's in all of these committees, we will, uh, the committees will be electing their um, chairpersons besides uh, worship, which ultimately falls under the pastor. So we will get to that in a minute. Health and wellness, please uh, uh, consult with Reva Miller if you want to be a part of that. Garden ministry, Andrea Knowles, who is always excited about seeing what her hands can produce from the soil God provides. So please reach out to her for that ministry. Sunday school, well, yeah, the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord that he might send those that will reach out into the fields and use what God has given them to help in this ministry. Praise God for my uh, wife, First Lady Candace Brown, who has taking this on solely for uh, since COVID. And I praise God for um, those that will be joining, especially uh, Clyde Saunders, who was uh, helping once a month and had made already a huge impact. So if you can help as an assistant and or if you can teach once a month, we sure would be uh, delighted to see you use your gifts and talents there. Worship. Rhonda Jackson will be our new chair as we come into this new year. And I praise God for Rhonda when it was just, oh, 10 of us. <laughs> uh, me, Karen, the, uh, Greg, and, 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 and Rhonda, and a few more. Uh, in those very beginning days after uh, COVID that were consistently here Sunday after Sunday. And it was then that uh, Karen started training uh, Rhonda in all of the different ways that we can make the worship uh, event move to being a worship experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just don't want to have a worship service. We want to have a worship experience like we had on Sunday. And I praise God for her and some have asked, you know, what do I look for for members on the worship uh, committee and specifically the worship leader? Well, first, one that understands uh, the vision of the pastor, because uh, ultimately worship falls under the uh, pastor's uh, area of uh, leadership. And so I thank God for Rhonda and her being here faithfully Sunday after Sunday, uh, despite when there uh, were um, some challenges in doing that. And so we look forward to working with her. And some have asked, you know, what do you look for? Well, 
if you look at the book Discipline and other areas, it says that the worship leader should be able to lead the congregation in providing opportunities for worship celebration that focus on God. And so uh, Rhonda will be uh, in the new year looking uh, to you to see if you can help in that worship celebration so it becomes an experience. There will be many ways that you can help uh, in that service uh, from uh, reading the scripture, to reading the prayer, to reading the announcements. There's gonna be brand new ways that you can be a part of the worship experience. And so please uh, reach out to her and or reach out to me and I'll be glad to, uh, to, to connect the two of you in that worship uh, uh, conversation or way you may be led to serve uh, in worship. And also we will be, uh, uh, con we will be uh, selecting a uh, vice uh, chair of worship as well. So if you're in worship every Sunday, right, or you can commit to uh, leaning into that uh, uh, the majority of the weeks, then uh, we pray that you would consider that as well. And then what I will do, I will take that and have a conversation with my uh, worship uh or nominations committee for this particular one. Yeah, praise be to God. Choir ministry, yeah, I praise God for Greg and how uh, the ministry of music is flourishing. And I praise God for uh, Tara James as well, one of the main directors, as we lean into understanding, especially in this season, music has moved to the forefront once again as being the area where we are seeing individuals coming out to use their gifts and talents and uh, to bless others in their expression. So please reach out to uh, Greg Wright or Tara James. And thirdly, uh, 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 Sally Saunders, who's also uh, been active in uh, that ministry uh, way back when no one was here but Sally and Greg. Uh, so reach out to any of those individuals, and I uh, just want to also give a shout out to um, uh, uh, to Chris for uh, Christopher for coming in and using his gifts and talents again that just uh, are obvious in his love for Christ. I could mention a hundred more, but so forgive me for just mentioning a few. Um, but I praise God that. Uh, got any all questions choir please go to greg and, the, and the, he can direct you in the right direction the benevolent ministry is a ministry that um gets together and prays over how we um hand out uh, it's not much but we do hand out um limited amounts of financial assistance throughout the year and we thank god for uh karen being in charge of that ministry currently and we will uh, continue to move towards that place where uh, we're handing off, where board members are handing off the ministry to other individuals. All right, hospitality, yeah. Uh, Karen is also the chair of that. Um, if you would uh, reach out to her, if you wanna be a part of that ministry as well, that would be fantastic. Ushers, if you wanna help with the uh, Usher Ministry, please reach out to Rose Douglas. And that is all um, from that department from our uh, charge conference. Again, um, and some have asked, well, where was our Reverend Dr. Sarah Calvert? Great question. Well, um, as many of you know, the Alexandria and Arlington districts were combined. Reverend Jeff Mickle retired and um, um, with the denomination um, actually going through a uh, pruning, if you will, um, there was the need to combine districts. And so all over the uh, annual conference, there are districts that have been combined. And so what many of the district superintendents are doing is having the elder of the church that is not all pastors or elders, but those that are elders uh, convene their own charge conference. And so that's why she was not here. And that's why I had the privilege of convening our charge conference along with uh, hundreds of other elders and pastors in our annual conference this year. 
caroling on the corner. All right. What is that's where we've been. Now, this is where we're headed as well. Caroling on the corner, December the 4th. Uh, I would love for you to take a look at that link and uh, sign up for singing from 4.30 to 5.30 on Sunday. That would be fantastic. And I'll let you know that uh, I will probably not be there during that time because uh, that is uh, the First Lady's birthday. Right. And uh, we will be celebrating dinner with her on her birthday during that time. But I hope you can represent me, Woodlawn Faith, and the body of believers that are here in uh, being with Aldersgate on the corner of Collingswood and Fort Hunt Road. Farewell to Bishop Lewis. That is going to be on December 10th. Uh, Brother. Uh, Robert Ware will be driving myself. So far, it's uh, the only signups I have right now are myself and uh, Karen Boston. I pray to have at least a half a dozen for us to go out and um, say uh, uh, thank you to her and bid her for farewell. So uh, if you're a leader in the church or you aspire to be a leader or you want uh, to just say thank you to our bishop, please send me a text or email and we'll put you on the bus or van. On that same day, uh, again, we thank God for Ta Connie Teal, who has orchestrated uh, the Toys for Tots pickup, and we will be uh, handing out uh, toys to, um, this year it looks like it will be mainly our uh, uh, church families uh, that are in need. And if you know of a another family, right, uh, or your family, please give her a call so that you can see what's still available. And then on the 11th, there's the Christmas Fellowship. Please be in touch with Connie Teal uh, for more information there as well. On the 17th of, Dece of December, Harborside Hotel. Uh, we're looking forward to being with uh, David Walker and the DWQ Jazz Band. Uh, they're playing from 12 to 2. However, the brunch is from 11 to 3. And so Robert Ware will also have room. If you want to sign up, let me know. Uh, send me a text and we'll put you on that list. Uh, we've got about um, eight spaces on the uh, van. If you want to be on the van, it's going to, uh, the uh, transportation on the van is free. However, there is uh, a cost for the brunch. If you do all you can eat uh, when you, uh, the brunch is 32, but it calls uh, or they add in the gratuity and taxes and it comes to $40. Also, if uh, you want to go and $40 is steep, you can get a nice breakfast for uh, $16. And when you add in the gratuity, it's $20. So to sum that up, uh, all you can eat brunch, $40, all you can eat or just a, uh, a, a breakfast or brunch meal uh, for $20. And just come on out and let's fellowship together. I pray that you would consider doing this um, and uh, letting me know whether you are uh, committed to going or not, and whether you need a, a seat on the van. So uh, uh, you really helped me out when you um, let me know before I text you or call you. So please, uh, uh, I'll be there. First Lady will be there. And I pray that you will be there. Amen. Christmas Eve at Aldersgate. Uh, you see those M's, the M's at 3 p.m. with a big M. That is when we will, they will have a, a modern Christmas Eve service. 5 p.m. is a modern Christmas Eve service. And then the T's are traditional services. However, they will also have a live nativity from 3.30 to 7.30 p.m. So I pray that you will uh, come on out on December 24th for that Christmas Eve service. Yes, what else? December 25th, Christmas is on Sunday this this year i pray that you will remember the reason for the season and as much as we're giving love and joy to our family members 
Uh, remember from this Sunday, I pray you remember that. Uh, our family, people, places, and things are gifts for us to enjoy after we have been filled with the joy of the Lord. And so part of being filled with the joy of the Lord is being able to remember that the reason for the season is Christ's birthday. Yeah, so don't slight Christ. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I'm just trying to make it plain. Come on out for Christmas worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday on his birthday that we celebrate. Then on December 31st will be our 10.30 p.m. midnight watch night service. And we will be, uh, and we have invited Aldersgate to come to us on that day. And next day, yeah, yeah, I love the Lord. I heard you sing it. Well, let me see if I can see you with your feet <laughs> and your presence. Yeah, that's a tough one, right? Because uh, we're going to be here December 31st, that night, leave here after midnight. Now, for those of you that have health concerns, I understand. Uh, if you uh, come to watch night and you're here and you don't leave here to 1230, don't get home to 130 and then come back and be here at 11 a.m., that's a lot if you're not physically able. But if the only thing getting in your way is the enemy in your mindset, then help me pray for you that we can uh, uh, celebrate that as well. Praise be to God. And then in the new year, looking for individuals that will assist Minister Joseph on uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and others that will assist uh, David Walker uh, at the 11 a.m. as we study the Gospel of John. Yeah, it's going to be a three-month, that's going to be a three-month uh, celebration of uh, the Gospel of John during Bible study. And I pray that uh, you would use your gifts and talents in helping in that area. Friends, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, uh, nor has it entered into the heart of a man or woman what God has prepared for those who love the Lord. There are so many ways that you can uh, learn to bring, first bringing yourself into a spirit of worship, where you come to worship not as a service, but worship as an experience. And we'll continue to teach on how to do that. And to serve, right, with your time, with your tithe, yeah, and with your talent. And then also growing together, yeah. Yeah. You know, I praise God for uh, being in a season where I want to be transformed daily into the image of Christ. I want to be able to do that so that it's contagious. And I want you to do that and so that you're contagious, so that where there's a spirit of confusion, you bring peace. Where there's a, a spirit of war, yeah, you bring reconciliation. Where there's a spirit of fear, you bring the spirit of hope. Yeah, can you grow to that place? Yeah, when individuals call you, they don't find someone that gets caught up in the whirling and twirling, but when they call you, you can lift them up to the reason why we gather. There's a difference between the church and the world, and you, have I, you and I have been called to it. I praise God for you, and as we prepare to go to, uh, go on uh, renewal leave, right, uh, uh, in January and February, we praise God for the leaders of Woodlawn Faith that will be stepping up. And I miss you already. Yeah, because uh, God has allowed me to see a new vision and allowed me to experience a new presence and a new peace. Yeah, and a new part of his provision in the days ahead. And I look forward to this uh, new experience with Woodlawn Faith in the days ahead and when I return. Uh, all right, that's it for now. I'll see you Sunday. Uh, please be in touch with the various ministry leaders, and we hope once again to have a full list once we get all of the information back of all the current ministry leaders and individuals on the ministry team to you by December 10th. You don't have to wait to then. If you want to be a part of that ministry, uh, just reach out, go back and look at the video and reach out to the uh, person's name next to that ministry. Other than the ministries that were voted on, all of these other ministries you can join throughout the year. Yeah, don't need to charge conference for them. Uh, you can join those ministries throughout the year. So please reach out to the person whose name was beside them. All right, friends, stay present and encouraged. God bless.